Good morning. It is dawn out on the prairie. The sun hasn't quite risen yet. Been up since 5. It's 625 right now. I'm camped in northern Colorado on Pawnee National Grassland, but I'm gonna be heading into Nebraska pretty soon here. First thing this morning and I'm gonna be spending the day in Nebraska, in western Nebraska, and I'm excited. All right, about to head back into Nebraska. Take note of that image on there, that triangular shaped thing that's gonna come into play later in the day today. So I think that when most of us think about Nebraska, we think about agriculture, corn maybe, and not a whole lot else. I don't know a ton about Nebraska. I think that's probably the case for most Americans. Definitely the case for most people overseas. Uh, you know, international viewers might be familiar with California, New York, maybe Florida, but uh, Nebraska doesn't get as much love. And in my mind, Nebraska is also synonymous with being flat, but here in western Nebraska, there actually are some rock formations. There's some some topography and it's interesting and it's beautiful and um, that's why I wanted to come here. I wanted to, to see this part of the state. Here I am in Scotts Bluff National Monument. It's free entry and the main attraction here is, is what's behind me. This is Scotts Bluff and this was a major waypoint on the Oregon and California trails and I seem to be visiting a lot of these sites recently, a lot of sites relating to these trails that were part of the westward migration. And as you might imagine, traveling for weeks and months across the plains and then getting to a place like this, uh, it would have been notable for those pioneers. And it was, it was a major, uh, major waypoint for the pioneers crossing the plains. There's a road the lo that goes up to the top of Scott's Bluff behind me here, but there's a gate on the road and doesn't open until nine o'clock, which is in about 15 minutes. But I, I noticed that there is, um, there is something interesting over here on Scott's Bluff behind me. There's a little arch, or there's a little hole in the rock. Let me see if I can zoom in and show that to you. Do you see that little pinpoint of light coming through? Pretty neat. There's kind of a, uh, a pass here between this bluff on the right and then this one on the left. And I think the trail or at least part of the trail, uh, the Oregon and California trails, went through that gap, went through that pass. Once the road to the summit opens up, we'll drive up there and do a couple of short, easy walks or hikes to, to viewpoints along the edge of the top up there. Admittedly, this is not a great time for views, again, with the haze and the smoke from wildfires in the area, but uh, should still be nice. On the other side of the visitor center here, it looks like there are some replica covered wagons. Let's go take a look at those. So this is a hand cart, which those who were too poor to buy a wagon would pull. They'd put their things in there and then have a couple of people pulling the cart. Got a wagon here, which is taller than I imagined a wagon to be. Here's another one. This one is much larger. Then here are some oxen yoked together, pulling the wagon. So we have a parking lot up here. And there are a couple of trails. There's a south trail and a north trail. Let's go over to the south one first, see what it's like. I 
Okay, it took all of three minutes to get to the end of here, to get to the overlook. Here's the road leading up from the visitor center. And again, not the best day if, uh, if visibility is what you're, you're looking for, what you're going for. It is hazy. Still beautiful though. That little hole or arch I pointed out earlier actually has a trail going to it. There's some hikers going over that way. That's neat. Well, that was fast. Let's go do the other trail, the North Overlook Trail, I think it's called. See what the view is like over that way. There's a sign up here saying, Hiram Scott, employee of the Rocky Mountain Fur Company, died in the vicinity of this bluff in 1828 after being deserted by his companions near the junction of the Laramie and North Platte Rivers. And so Scott, of course, is the guy who this bluff is named after. And here's the view from the North Overlook, the North Platte River is down there. We've got some badlands around the base of Scott's Bluff. The friendly neighborhood factory of some sort. On a clear day you can see Chimney Rock out here, which is actually our next destination. So let's get back to the car drive back down the mountain, and then drive east to Chimney Rock. So this is Chimney Rock, arguably the most famous landmark along the old Oregon and California trails, in part because it is so striking looking and there's nothing else like that out here, but also because it was something for the pioneers to look forward to. Everything east of here, this is all flat. These are the Great Plains out here, and so Chimney Rock marked the end of the Great Plains and the start of some, uh, some topography. So you got cliffs and, and canyons, and then ultimately you've got the Rocky Mountains and everything beyond. There's an $8 entrance fee to the museum here. It doesn't really interest me, and so I think I'm just gonna take some pictures and then go on to our next spot. I wish there were a trail to get out there, but I don't think there is. Also, I saw a sign saying that uh, thousands of pioneers wrote their name, I carved their name into the base of the rock, but it's almost all weathered away now because the rock is so soft, and it used to be much taller than it is now. But over the last century and a half, it has noticeably shortened. It's also the symbol of Nebraska. It's on the Nebraska State Quarter. It's about 325 feet tall from the base up to the top. Okay, I went inside and asked the guy if there was a trail out there just to make sure. He said no, but there is a way to get closer. You can drive just down the road a little bit more, turn right on a dirt road. That'll take you to a, a viewing point that's a little bit closer. You can get a better view of it there. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm just down the road now at Chimney Rock Cemetery. And indeed, there is a great view of Chimney Rock from here, better than from the museum area. Also, there is a trail here. The trail goes here, and then this way. I actually talked to a couple who were hiking it, and they said it was a nice trail. A little bit overgrown, but uh, not bad, and so I'm gonna give it a shot. Maybe because this isn't a, a maintained trail, the guy at the visitor center can't recommend it to people, but I saw it on Google Earth, on the satellite view on Google Maps, when I was researching this area, and so I thought that it looked like there was a trail that went out there, so I was surprised when the guy told me that there wasn't, but this is, I mean, this is definitely a trail. Also, when I was just now researching this, I saw old black and white pictures of it, early photos of it, and yeah, it definitely looks taller, like it has a a point on it. It used to have a point on it 
that it certainly doesn't have anymore, so it is indeed eroding away. Well, there's a little monument at the end of the trail here, so... I mean, I don't think you're not allowed to be on this trail. I think this is definitely something you're allowed to do. I just think they don't want to publicize it. Anyway, it says, Historic landmark of the old Oregon Trail, Mormon Trail, Deadwood Trail, and Pony Express. Great little hike. I mean, it only took me 10 minutes to get out here. Looks like the trail goes off that way and off this way, but I think this is good. Mappy was just getting to the base of it here. Welcome to Agate Fossil Beds National Monument. Let's go for a hike over here somewhere, shall we? Believe it or not, it is a Saturday afternoon and I am the only person out here. So this is not a super popular area. This has got to be one of the more under the radar national monuments around. There's not a whole lot to see or do here, but I'm going to hike a couple of trails. The first is the Demonolix Trail, and it goes just up this little path here. So when I was a kid, I remember seeing, I don't know, probably on the History Channel or something similar, these crazy looking fossilized corkscrew things called the Devil's Corkscrew. I didn't remember much else about them. I had the, the vague feeling that they were in the Midwest or on the Great Plains somewhere. Turns out those are here and that's what this trail is going toward. Basically it's a fossilized corkscrew and it is the burrow of an extinct ancient beaver. And this area, Agate Fossil Beds, is known for its abundance of fossils of extinct mammals. So that's why it's a national monument, that's why it's important, that's why I wanted to visit. And here we have an in-situ version of one of these devil's corkscrews. A demon elix. That is really neat. I mean, it's taller than I am. That's about seven feet tall. The picture I have in my mind is, is of a grown man standing with a shovel digging one of these out. Similar kind of to this, but if I can find a picture of, of what I'm thinking of, I'll, I'll add that to the video here. And this caption over here says that this plant-eating rodent had deep-rooted teeth that continued to grow as they were worn down. Their teeth were used to dig the spiral burrows while powerful forelimbs pushed the dirt behind. What a weird thing for a beaver to do. Now this is interesting. This is a demonolix that has two chambers in it. So it had the long corkscrew shape, and most of them have just one burrow going off to the side, one chamber. This one has another chamber going off the other side. And you can see that here. Here's the vertical part. Chamber off to the right, and chamber off to the left. Well, that does it for this hike. There are only two hikes in this National Monument, I think. One is this one, the other is kind of on the other side of the National Monument. It's not a very big National Monument, but it's a short drive down the road. So this is the Belmont Tunnel. It is the only railroad tunnel in Nebraska. The only train tunnel in the entire state. Obviously there's no train here now. I think sometime in the 80s 
they pulled the tracks and they uh, rerouted the train. It's 600 and something feet long. And it was kind of hard to find. It's down an unmarked and very inobvious dirt road. Out in the middle of stinking nowhere, too. Gotta wait for the dust to clear here before we can get a good look at it again. But yeah, built in 1889, used until 1982. So it had a good run, almost 100 years. Basically the walls in here are all just graffitied up. But some of it is actually pretty darn good. Look at that. That's talent right there. And then there's one on the other side too. Pretty good. Nebraska obviously being pretty flat, there isn't a huge need for a lot of railroad tunnels, so they just ended up making this one here. All right, I'm tired, it's been a long day. Let's go find a campsite. Well, found a campsite, it wasn't too difficult. I had mapped out a couple potential locations uh, at home when I was planning this trip, and sure enough, this one panned out. Beautiful spot in Nebraska National Forest. Beautiful canyon, really nice area. There's a little creek, a little babbling brook over there that's like a foot or two wide. Very nice, very pleasant. And I'm done for the day, but keep watching because I'm gonna continue this video with tomorrow's Nebraska adventures. Had a great time today. Um, I've just been kind of surprised at how much I've enjoyed this and how beautiful this part of Nebraska is. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of the things that I like to see in other parts of the country in the, you know, farther to the west. Mountains and historical sites and the occasional just strange thing. And it's been fun to see all that kind of stuff just in a different location in a different state. Someplace I'm not familiar with. I'm gonna do some camp chores now. I'm gonna take a shower. I'm gonna have dinner. And then uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. So Nebraska isn't exactly the first place that comes to mind when you think of interesting things, geologically speaking. But as we saw yesterday, there is some interesting stuff to see here in western Nebraska. And we're going to continue to do that today. We are at a park called Toadstool Geological Park. I'm sitting in the parking lot now in the parking area. Uh, I don't really know what's here. I think there's a hike. I think you can do some hiking out in the in the badlands here. I don't know. Let's go figure it out. So here's the kind of terrain we're dealing with here. Very interesting badlands formations. And also at the trailhead here we have a sod house. I've always been fascinated by these. So these are what the early homesteaders used to build and, and live in. Out on the plains here, there are no trees and so they couldn't build cabins out of trees. So they plowed up strips of sod and made houses out of it. This one was built in 1984 and is still going strong. There's cactus up on the roof, very nice. Let's go inside here. Yeah, it feels very comfortable actually. I'd live in one of these. I think these are just amazing. What a, what a, what an innovation. Here's the trailhead. Fossil collecting prohibited, makes sense. And then there's a one mile loop around this area. Or if you're feeling especially adventurous, you can go to Hudson Meng, where there are um, some bison bones 30 miles away. No, three miles away. Oh, that's not bad. I thought it was 30. <laughs> but we're just gonna do the loop here. This 
is great. This is a little bit of southern Utah, my old stomping grounds in Nebraska. I, I never would have thought this was Nebraska. If you were to plunk me down here and say, guess where you are, Nebraska would not have been anywhere on my list. There's a little brochure you can pick up at the trailhead and it corresponds with some of these numbers along the trail. At point number eight here, we have a mammal trackway. Kind of hard to see, but these holes here are extinct rhinoceros tracks. They're about, about the size of my fist and they extend for a long ways in either direction here. There are lots of them. Well, this has been a great little hike. Really enjoyed it. It's just a mile, but it packs a lot in. Definitely worth doing. I think I'm done in Nebraska now. It's been great. Really enjoyed the last couple of days here, but uh, it's time to move on. Go north to another state I've never been to, South Dakota. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.